<laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the reality kingdom where we put the real in reality. Period. The fuck? Period. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got all this fucking. It's just urban. I am your host, Farrah. We are joined by one of the How you doing? Mm. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, my faves are back in their well deserved position. Mm -hmm. And they're Got better. A scary. Got a little scary for a minute. Just one day, actually. <laughs> Not too long. If you're a shady bunch fan like me, um, this is a great week for you, and this is a great week for us because we motherfucking won. Koozie yeah. Queen is back on her throne. Santi Mother Tina. Thank you, Mother Tina. You know what? You know, hmm. you know, we've had a very hmm. one-sided beef with Santi. <laughs> one-sided. She does not know who we are at all. But <clears throat> you know, she really has been fighting for my stand card. She basically knocked me down, grabbed my purse, and got it herself. I gave up. Fighting gave up. Her. She has it. She has it. She dusted off. That she's taking it. And, and she's taking it. She's taking it. She has I don't it. know what to tell you. I'm she is Mother Tina. Sorry. And I never dissed. If you if you have I never did felt like I ever dissed her, then you you're didn't. wrong. You didn't. When I when I did my drive, I picked Koozie first, <laughs> as I should. Hey. And Santina second. I mean, I'm sorry. Sounds like you picked mothers only. I only pick mothers. And then Shania. Mm. Stepsister. Cousin, maybe. Hmm. Is she a relative? Um, but if you, don't see the <laughs> if you don't see the title, we will be covering the digital daily recaps, which were not much at all. Bitch. Not much at all. We will not be here 25 minutes, 30 minutes max. If mm -hmm. you don't have your meal, go ahead and get it because this is this is it. <laughs> I was like, it's definitely going to be longer. You big tripping. Okay, hopefully it's longer. You know what it is because I got a lot of shit to say. Mm -hmm. because I mean, especially the episode, too. It was a lot of shit to say. Well, the episode didn't have much really either. It didn't, but let's get into that because we got an episode today. We, we got did. the T on the HH, which we already had because it's secret. No, what is it? Who done it week, bitch? Yes, who done it week? Giving very much. If you watched that episode, you saw them at the round table. Giving very like much it. try us, try us. It was giving try us. You know, um, honestly, why hasn't Canada have their own try this version? You can't have one. Australia got one. Really? Do they even have Survivor? They have Amazing Race Canada. They don't have Survivor Canada. They have love. Sure. I know they have Bachelor in Paradise Canada randomly. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming they have the Bachelor Canada. They have mm -hmm. American Race Canada, and they have Big Brother Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they don't have Survivor. They don't. I don't think they feel like they have the market for it. That's why we got to pay for the sponsors right now. That's why we got this. Mm -hmm. Why are you gagging them like that? It's just the truth. So I think it's Canadians can be on U.S. Survivor, but Canadians can't be on U.S. Big Brother. We can't mix and mingle a little bit more. Like that's the thing because it's, it's so weird because you it. see like Marianne, you see Erica, you see Shane, you see Omar. winners. Winners. All uh, icons, right? They're on Survivor eating it up. They're not even American, babe. They're on the Challenge USA. Well, Shane went on the Challenge USA, a whole Canadian bitch. So clearly they don't care about mixing and mingling. Let's mix some of these people because I wouldn't like it's like that's and that's the problem with like specifically the challenge the challenge USA. I would want them on the challenge USA, but they Canada. So it's like they would have to be on the MTV version and I don't want them on the MTV version. And we're getting tea about the challenge USA and I don't even want it. <laughs> they, can delete the, they can delete the whole show. Um, so in this episode, we got the HOH, the HOH competition. Mm -hmm. This competition was secretive. Mm -hmm. It was actually a good competition. Shh. I liked it. Shh, keep it low, keep it on the low low. I mean, I keep it undercover. Well, she say, uh, I keep it undercover. Period. <laughs> the fuck? I don't know what you was gonna say. The <laughs> keep it on the low low. low, 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 low. Hey. <laughs> but um, they was keeping it undercover. So the gag was. <laughs> First of all, Hope and Koozie couldn't play. They couldn't play. Everybody else could. So they went in one by one. Mm -hmm. And the gag was you could bid. How do I explain this shit? You could, you could so bid. So basically, what happened could. at the beginning was the sponsors added 50K to the prize pot. So the girls who don't know, and they're going to cut it off, their prize pot is 100,000 plus some other shit. So yeah. they added 50K to make it 150K thousand. But the HOH. <laughs> <laughs> but it, with the HOH, it's a bidding HOH, and you yeah. can bid on that 50K they were added. So it's like basically the highest bid gets the HOH, right? Yes. And if it's a tie, you have to, the tiebreaker question is so everyone has to bid. And then in case there's a tie on the bid, there's a question you have to answer. The question is what do you think the average bid was yes. between the other house guests? So whoever is closest to that average, if their bid ties, is going to win the HOH. So I like this is a cute con. I, I, I don't know. Like, I know I Daniel, he went in first and then Renee went after him. And their logic was, we don't want to 
bid the full the 50k. People are going to be mad. And it's like, I don't Who know, know you ain't no one will be mad. That's and who's like, going to know it was you? This was a 50k that wasn't part of the full prize pot. That's Literally. why you see people's logic going in was like, I'm going to just bid the whole thing. Like, this was as not money that you were going to have anyway. You might as well just bid it for the ancient wage. That was the point of it being 50k. These sponsors yeah. were not giving you niggas 50k. They wanted y'all. It was a lie. For the HOA. It was all a lie. It was all a lie. Um, I feel like they could have just all. If my optimal strategy was, I feel like everyone's gonna be fifty, or at least one person is gonna be fifty k. So been. for me to win the secret HOH, because they were told it was secret, I'm bidding fifty k. Who gonna whip my ass? Right. The ghost. hundred k is no fine. You know, and I don't think they care to the take taxes like that. So hundred k is don't. fine. We're good. And honestly, 100k wasn't shit to begin with. So what's 50 no, more k? The, the guy is they really put it in y'all face. That's why oh, he's up here leaving like it's Quitting. nothing. They Left and right. Hundred thousand dollars. I could get a hundred thousand dollars at work, bitch. The guy well, I, could, I, I couldn't. I guess Zach. Can. But they might be able to. Zach could. Zach was Fuck losing money there. The <laughs> fuck. Put some respect. Put some. Girl, Please stop. Man? Just right. Hold up. Hell? <laughs> you just get to talking when you get on a podcast. But um, that's why <laughs> that's why people need to not have podcasts. Delete them all. Why is Andrew Tate out of jail? Anyways, oh, Lord. <laughs> like Lord, that's who uh, yeah. that you know. Yeah, that's what that's why I thought of it. <laughs> Aspires to be. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> anyways, they all did the HRH competition. They all did they bid. Um, some of them was not bid fifty k. Don't know what they was thinking, but they ended up at the round table. At the round table, Koozie, she's reading the letter and she's like, okay. Now, I'm going to tell you how what the highest bid was. She tells them the highest bid was 50K. Boom. So everyone who did 50K knows, bitch, we the hottest bid. If you didn't do 50K, you lost. Mm -hmm. Then she's like, the tiebreaker answer. Then she's going to read out the exact guess that won. And it was 49,099 cents. And that was Santina's exact Santina. guess. Which means most of them did bid 50K, I'm assuming. Yeah. So it's like. Because the 49 damn. was the. The average yeah. bid. My, I, I would definitely have lost because I would probably would have did 50 and then 45 for the average. You could have won probably because we don't know everyone's guess. We only know Santina's. So what if like, because Ty did 49,000 too, but he did 49,999. She did 49,000 exactly. The highest one we know after that is Dan and he did 35,000. So maybe it was somewhere in between the 35 and the 49 and no one else guessed in between there. Because mm. we know Daniel, Daniel didn't guess shit. He said, I think everyone's going to do what I do. So I did 25,000 as my guess. So I'm assuming maybe she was the only one in that area other than Ty. But anyways, Santina ends up winning the HOH. Mm -hmm. We see in the episode that she allegedly isn't going to tell anyone. And then she tells Jonathan. <laughs> Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because it was like, she was trying to be, she was like, I think you're good this week. And then she was trying to walk out. And he was like, wait, what? And she was like, girl, just, I, 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 know I, 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 I know you're good. I actually know you're good. For sure. He was like, so you're I mean, I can't say anything. And then she I walked can't... all the way back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell anybody. <laughs> like, girl. <laughs> if you wanted to tell him, it's okay. Just tell him. Um, but you know, so I definitely was underestimating how close she was. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was underestimating how much um, she was close to Jonathan. I know people were talking about it because they both wanted Rob to say, but I think they actually built something from that. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, like, no shade what you said. I mean, it's just kind of true. I mean, we saw from <laughs> Santina that she needed a lot of guidance in her previous, you know, HOH. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not shocked that she also needed or wanted that. Found. Guidance. She found. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not going to be mad because at the end of the day, she was guided in the right Right direction. motherfucking direction. So we have to say that. It's always been the right direction because even Zach was guiding her in the right direction. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. It wasn't my, <laughs> wasn't my face. It my face were always safe. So say to Was it Koozie but Koozie? No, because I, I, I knew as soon as I got the answer, I was like, oh, God, Koozie, get behind me. It was bad. I was she so just nominated scared. the girl. She just nominated the she fuck out of the girl. She just nominated girl, and it didn't touch the block at all. Now, see, when you're a motherfucking mother, bitch. That's the best player in the house. I'm sorry. I don't tell y'all. I don't know what to tell you, honestly. But anyways, um, basically, throughout the episode, everyone is trying to guess who the fuck the HOH is because they don't basically. know. Um, and damn near, that was it. By the end of it, she nominated. Um, mm -hmm. the noms were Ty and Dan because Jonathan wanted it to be. And that gets more into it in the digital dailies. Yeah. So I feel like we should just get into the digital dailies. Was there anything mm -hmm. else on the episode? 
Well, no, I, that, I mean, that really is just the main thing. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, yeah, we can just get into the digital dailies because yeah, I think every other conference. But on. honestly, I mean, it'll be it'll okay. It's okay to introduce it. Like, basically, we learned that Jonathan and Hope are, of course, so a form of a duo, yeah. and they're now linking up with Kuzi, Anika, and, and Daniel. Daniel. And mm-hmm. Jonathan mentioned in the episode that he wants to use his relationship with Santina to merge it with that other group so they yep. can all work together. And it's yep. like, shout out to Jonathan. Because Jonathan says he's working with the niggas, he's working with the POC. He he's said no whites. With them. <laughs> Allowed. I'm sorry. You know we rocking with Mark because Mark is rocking with us, bitch. We are rocking with Jonathan. I really Period. like Jonathan. I would love Jonathan. One he day. said, "Put that Claudia girl on the block. Put that damn boy hey, on the block. Like he didn't get Claudia on the block." Sorry. Like I'm so, Jonathan, babe. He's put been had my stand card. He's been had it. That's a man. It's, as now, soon you, as his profile posted that, that picture, a man, that's a man. Jonathan is a man. Mm-hmm. Now see. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and he really ate that up. But that's basically the setup from the episode. Like, clearly, yeah. you know, since he's the HOH, Jonathan's running it, and mm-hmm. he's keeping the people that he wants to say. And uh, the Shady Bunch is in the middle. Period. Uh, running, uh, running the game. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, on March 31st, we got that. Well, we got the March 31st drop, which mm-hmm. was Friday. So, this was right after the next day after Santino went HOH. Um, this is what happened that day. So we see the conversation between Jonathan and Santina. That was one of the first main combos. And basically, Jonathan, of course, knows Santina has HOH. Mm-hmm. And they start talking about <clears throat> how Dan is the main target, how Ty is also a big target for Santina. Mm-hmm. And my first thought was, Santina thought of this? Let me tell you why. Santina and Ty have been close all game. It didn't seem like, from what we knew, that it wavered. But we do know who doesn't like Ty is Jonathan. So I was yeah. like, how is he a backup option for her? I was very confused. And I will say, I will say, like, from the episode, she confirms that, and this could be edited, she confirms that the reason why she is targeting Ty and Dan is because she sees them as two big power players in the game, and she wants mm-hmm. to make a big shot with her HOH. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think she was necessarily influenced. I mean, that could be completely edited out. We don't know, mm-hmm. but I mean, I, I I guess she's done. I guess mm-hmm. she's done. And this is this is the uh, March thirty first one. So at this time, she's not considering both of them. I mean, we learned from the episode that she puts up both of them at the same time. But mm-hmm. at this point, it was you know Dan and Apollo. Uh, Ty is the backup. Yeah, backup. and then if Dan wins, we don't then Ty can go up. Yeah. But I, honestly, I mean. Immediately, I was just thinking, I mean, wow. Like, she's just unpredictable as hell. Yes. Like, it's kind of interesting that the two secret agents that we have in the beginning of the, it's uh, Victoria, who I see is very unpredictable and did a very random-ass thing with this HOH. And mm-hmm. Santina, I don't think she's as, she's not as, what's the word for Victoria? Erratic. Erratic. Um, you know, she's not as <laughs> in your face with it. You want yeah. the best? She's a little more calm. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. A little bit more, honestly, secretive about it because everybody knew Victoria was ancient ways, but it will earn. Well, hey, hey. Next thing, Santina's getting out because Santina is telling people, Victoria, it was just written all over her damn face. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's just showing how unpredictable Santina is. Like, this girl will do anything and she will target her ally at the end of the day. That's one thing yeah, she will do. Multiple that's, times. That's one thing Santina's gonna do with ways to target her ally. So, as long as Kuzi is against her, Kuzi is Kuzi safe. <laughs> The fuck? Is, one thing she said is not going to do is something that's good for her again. No shade. But hey, hey, it benefits me. And so I love it. If she I, likes it. I love it. I love, I love it. it. I'm because sorry. I don't think, I don't I don't think you. you know, this is definitely a, another classic case of, you know, if she was, you know, playing Stan Twitter's version of Big Brother, of course she's eating it up. Because they hate <laughs> Ty. They hate Dan. They want mm-hmm. him to go. Which, I agree. They can go. However, for Stan <laughs> It's uh, not giving. I think Dan could have still been a target because Dan is actually not working with anybody and he has spoke about nominating her and getting mm-hmm. her out. But Ty is similar mm-hmm. to what Kuzi did with that. It's like, this is someone that could work for you that could be a shield in front of you. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to ruin that relationship. Especially uh-huh. because she she's ruining this relationship this week while potentially, if he finds out she's a secret HOH, which I'm pretty sure is going to come up. Mm-hmm. Uh, while other people are now gaining that relationship that she literally had. Yeah. Girl, you could have just put up Claudia and Shania in them. If you don't put up Dan, you could have put up somebody. You you could have chose yeah, a Shania. group. And Ty's the one person who literally wanted you to stay last week. He was going to have Hope try to use the veto on you. 
what happened? I don't know. She just don't be thinking. But she was worried about nominating him, nominating him outright because he kept saying he was going to quit. This got the girl. And mad. it's like, I think it's so <laughs> annoying. Like, nigga, if you were going to sit up here and try to threaten to quit every time Not you get nominated, you get targeted, you should have left with that. You should have Literally, vibes. It's weird because. So my thing is, if I was Big Brother, I would call him in. So did you want? Did you say you wanted to leave? We have your bags packed. They can't do it though. So many people don't quit. They were losing. Weeks. I wouldn't give a damn. I wouldn't give a they damn. They would. That's that's, hey, that's money. Problem. Every that's week. Problem. Every you week. Sit up on my show. Money. And threaten to quit. Like, and, and I, I don't take threats lightly. He would be out. Mm-hmm. My thing is, they a, need to bring back in with the, uh, the loudspeaker. Ty, if you threaten to quit again, <laughs> you will be expelled. Your voice. Not even the uh, big brother one. <laughs> Literally, I just feel like Rob and JM could have been here if Zach and Ty was gonna quit. Or, L- literally, yeah, I, well, like, JM, sorry. I'm kind of happy Rob out because you know too much to around. You know, mm-hmm. he, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, if I have to pick between Rob and Ty, I think I would pick Rob at this point because Ty is. I just have to pick Ty. Ty is Ty is, much. I, like I, after this, Santina and Hope talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Santina is basically she's trying to make it seem like Dan's HOH. Mm-hmm. She's talking about how Dan's weird. He's acting a little, uh, uh, and he has been acting weird because everyone keeps saying it. I don't know yeah. what he's doing, but if the he's issue with Dan is that he doesn't actively try to work with anyone. I don't think that he's even doing anything suspicious. I just think Dan isn't working with anybody, and that's the problem. So to mm-hmm. them, he's like, oh, he he's acting weird. They don't know how he is normally. Yeah. I don't think Dan cares. Mm-mm. It's like Dan give me a hundred percent like he just be chilling. It was vacation time. Baby. Dan be giving like I'm about to roll up this blunt and chill. <laughs> or it's like, period, Dan. Like I don't, I don't think that he's just being <laughs> I think Dan is just does not care. Yeah, <laughs> like very it. nonchalant. After this, uh, well, what what does Hope say? Oh, Hope t- mentions like how he feels like. We should have saved Rob, and I don't think the big guys should be coming after each other. All the strong players coming after each other with the with the woo. Yeah. Apparently, Hope feels this way. Like he feels like floaters, the floaters are in power. Yeah, he also Which said in a previous. Are. He said in a previous conversation with Jonathan, like, should we try to like reconnect with Ty? And Jonathan's yeah. like, no, no, we're not doing that. So, yeah. like I said, and this is why I I feel I have so much faith for Hope as a player because I do think that when he's alone and he's thinking about the game, he has pretty good instincts. I mean, what he's saying is true. He is a big power player. If shots are taken, he, Jonathan, Ty, Dan, these are the people that the shots are going to be taken out first. So mm-hmm. he understands that he's in danger, and he understands that people like John, uh, Daniel, Kuzi, and Nika um, are in power. I wouldn't necessarily say they're floaters. Mm-hmm. Um, well, in a negative connotation, he's trying to use it as. Yeah. Uh, but it's like they're not they're not just floating. Like they got in power because they're just playing better than you hope, no shade. But it's like <laughs> I think what he's saying is true. It's just clearly he doesn't have enough people around him <clears throat> to be with that because I think yeah, what we see this week definitely is that Santina – Hope and Jonathan are a trio of sorts. You know, what we know from the episode in the Digital Daily Drop, Santina has not been brought into this five-person thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they have no leverage over the Shady Bunch in an alliance. Mm -hmm. And they're also not fully solidified with Santina because she hasn't been brought in with them. So Mm -hmm. it's just that, like, you know... And I can see why you wouldn't want to, but Jonathan really wants to, but it's hard because Santina will nominate her allies. She'll get in that alliance and nominate all of them. And it's like, okay. And then, literally, like... uh, Literally. And then, but that's the that's the issue they're at now because it's just like they should be using Santina's HOH to make a move optimally for the three of them at least for Jonathan and and and, um, uh, and Jonathan I would say Jonathan and Santina not even necessarily Hope oh. I, so, like this move it's like okay like this move isn't necessarily even benefiting Ty I mean I mean benefiting Jonathan in a long term way you know what I mean, what you mean. you're getting yeah. out Dan to then try to get out Ty next week okay you take out yeah. two big targets you and Hope are left standing there looking like boo 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 yeah. you know yeah. they're not making I think a move that's going to get them to the end of this game they're, get, they're making a move for the immediate target of this person is saying my name I yeah. want to get them out which yeah. honestly if they did swoop over with Ty I do think they could work with him again he has mm-hmm. nowhere else to go Mm-mm. And he still likes them. It, like Ty had Ty went in the house. He had an initial feeling about everyone, and that initial feeling I think will apply for the rest of the entire game. He still mm-hmm. doesn't like Renee. He still doesn't give a fuck about Shania. He still likes Koozie. He still likes Jonathan and Hope. So I feel like if those people reapproached him, he's gonna continue to feel the same way. I think he just has a consistent feeling about these people. He likes them. He doesn't really like them. 
that's it. He doesn't really like the Renee and them. And we'll see that by the end of these drops because he's still saying their name. Even though he's kind of on their side. I don't know. Um, but after this, Claudia and Ty talk. And my first thought was, Claudia, stand up. No, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> Claudia. One thing about Claudia, she is standing by her ne- man. I tweeted the other You day. almost said the wrong word. <laughs> no, she's standing by her nick. No. <laughs> but she's standing by her man. I tweeted the other day, it's giving Julie Chen Mubez, bitch. She said, I don't give a fuck what Ty <laughs> has done. That is my man. And I will stick beside him. Is this is this your husband? That's fine. <laughs> And uh, are you gonna? And I'm gonna stick beside him. I'm gonna stick beside him. Yeah, that is Claudia. Down horrendous. And I get Shh. it. He cute. He got a cute face. Nice body, Adi. I don't, I mean, oh, I'm yeah. gonna say something rude. Yeah, Claude, Claude. Remind, remind me, remind me to tell you my thoughts after the podcast. Ciao. <laughs> Claudia says to Ty that she feels like the best group would be Ty, Dan, Shania, and herself. She mentions we should talk. <laughs> Thankfully, they didn't have AJ Waits because <laughs> not the yawn. I was stressed. <laughs> the showman's alliance that Lee had pr- predicted. This is what Claudia was like. Claudia said, "Let's what, get it done." It's what we four and it, <laughs> they mm-hmm. just not gonna initiate it. Hang it up, babes. Too late, babes. They're nommed. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Ty then, says, yes. "Oh, I was just gonna say that's when Ty basically mentioned that. I mean, this is what we were trying to do with Zach last yep. week, which all went down. Apparently, mm-hmm. Claudia and Shanae were actually heavily interested, yep. but them being weird." you know, <laughs> put them out of it. But, you know, they were heavily considering it. But now it's like Claudia is really, really trying to push it. And I think what mm-hmm. we see from these Digital Daily Drops this week is that, and I, I said this, it's like, if they, if, if the H-O-H is not in their hands, Claudia, the girly pops, basically, mm-hmm. um, they will not be able to solidify this group the way they want to. I mean, we see in this drop, it's just, this drop and the next few, it's just a lot of speculation, a lot of unsurety, a lot of scrambling from the girly pops, Dan and Ty. They're not able to solidify this at all moving forward because they don't know who <laughs> HOH is. They have no power this week. Mm-hmm. We also get some tea from Claudia. Now, uh, she says that she doesn't feel that close to Renee. Mm-hmm. That her and Shanae are the big two and Renee is a third wheel and Renee knows that. So she feels like it's potential that Renee might flip on her. And she says that she wants to target Hope and Santina. Hope and Santina are her main target. Mm -hmm. Now, on the Renee thing, people are speculating that that might not be her true intention or her true thoughts. I think it's real. I think she genuinely sees Renee as, you know, other. And I think she is prioritizing in her mind, at least, Shania and even Dan and Ty. I think the yeah. group she offered was her real group. Well, even when, when she talks to when she talks to Ty in this conversation, she says, "We need to talk with me, you, Dan, and Shania." She does yeah. not say Renee. Exactly. So they, they, you know, and we know from the diary room drop, the only one we got this season. I thought we would get more of those, but we got from the diary room drop a while ago that Random. you know. She's an alliance with Renee, but she trusts Shania. Shania. So and Ty, very, she trusts Ty. Ty too. So it's very clear that they, and that's they, not, they, she, right. they already feel like she's on the outside. And I do think, you know, Renee's strategy <laughs> isn't on the same wavelength as theirs because she doesn't have that showman. I mean, even if Zach was here, she didn't want to work with Zach. Y'all were talking mm-hmm. about, oh, oh, Ty and Claudia, Dan, Shanae, she doesn't want to work with Zach. She doesn't want to work with men. She wants to work with the girl. She, literally she doesn't want to work with Dan. She doesn't want to work with Ty. She doesn't want to work with Zach. And that's not the same mindset that the girls. And the girly pops need to be on the same boat. Mm-hmm. And I feel like them low-key knowing they're not they should try to do that more, especially Claudia and Renee. We see them talk, and I feel like Claudia the whole time is like thinking of the opposite of what Renee, but she's not telling her the truth. Yep. And I think Claudia, she needs to be a little bit more truthful. Claudia's mindset is working with the guys <laughs> with Renee to, you know, mm-hmm. stay in power. Renee's position is she wants to ride out the middle, yep. um, play the guys on yep. both sides, and kind of stick with the girls. And then mm-hmm. Shania is worried about Dan. Um, period. <laughs> After this, we get a segment of Koozie. Koozie kind of goes around to Jonathan and then Hope. She thinks Dan is the HOH. She's and she's worried child. about it. She, she, she knows Dan is the HOH. And she's like, I'm getting nominated. Hope's going up next to me. Jonathan, you're the renom. It's bad for us. She was for sure, bitch. And so I guess Jonathan saw she was running around. So when he talks to her again, he's like, hold on, girl. <laughs> I think we're good, babes. He doesn't tell her who's HOH, but he's like, I think the person who is HOH. We're good. Yeah, and my thing is... They're on the same side as us. They're on the same side. So she... It's obvious who it is, I feel like, for her after this, because Jonathan's only close to the five of them. Yeah. She knows Anika and Daniel would have told her, and Hope probably would have told her, too. 
So if it's not them, who else did what John what John gotta be Santiti? So I think from here Which, on, oh, that would have stressed me out if I was cool because like, <clears throat> what, like on our side, what's your side, like, you mean you? <laughs> but he means us. He it's meant like us. One, once again, I mean, it, it, it sucks for Kuzi because she's not, once again, in a situation where she is loosely working with Santina. Santina is keeping her safe, but they have no connection with each other. Like, Santina is not sharing any information with her. And I'm saying, like, this week is really hard because she's a secret HOH. But, I mean, we've and only seen her Kuzi. reiterating her allegiances to Hope and Jonathan. You think Hope and Jonathan are going to get you to the end? Hope and Jonathan are not even in two of the best positions in the game. Like, girl, it's just like, if you were going to keep a whole portion of the house safe that you recognize side, you should have been working on that relationship as well. I don't understand that. It's funny with Santina because people value her as a ally because I guess they think she'll be a soldier. She can win comps. So she's very valuable to a lot of people. A lot of people keep mentioning her name as in, we want her in the group. Jonathan was doing it. Ty was doing it. Zach yeah. was, well, Zach didn't want to, but Ty wanted to. And it's like, she doesn't, put in any of work on her own to actually get in these groups. She could be in all of the main alliances this season, but she puts in like negative amount Zero of work. Zero effort. Crazy. After this, we get the Renee Claudia talk. And this is when we find out their views. Renee wants the sides to stay even. Renee is basically like, if a shot gets taken at one side, we need to take a shot at the other side so we can keep them even. We need to keep them even. And I like that. No, like, Love that. I'm really gagged by Renee because she has really, really, like, she immediately picked up on the fact of what we were talking about. Kuzi's yeah. move, Zach leaving, you know, Vanessa leaving as well. It caused a shift in the house that put the girly pops in the center of the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Renee is recognizing that she basically wants to play both sides. And it's like, like we mentioned, it's clear that Claudia, you know, in these conversations, she's like, it just, it, it just feels like she's placating Renee. Like, you could tell yeah. that she's not... Fully down she's not Renee adding said. anything. She's saying, okay, girl. Like, Renee will mention it, and she'll be like, oh, mm -hmm, that's what it's giving. Um, but we can tell, and, and this is interesting, because it's like, Claudia is a good player in a, in a way, but after this conversation, it kind of makes me feel differently about her game, because she basically doesn't want that. She yeah. kind of doesn't want to play in the middle. She just wants to be with the group of people, which includes Ty and Dan, who are two of the biggest targets in the house, which can be targets above them. But I think that's what your, she's thinking. But if your side doesn't continuously win HOH, you're going home. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with them just choosing a side. And I feel like when Renee's talking to her, she's not necessarily agreeing. Renee wants to target Dan. Claudia's like, you mean work with Dan? And Renee's like, target Dan. And Claudia's like, mm, you mean Dan's on our side? And it's like, y'all aren't they, the same They page. really want and, two different and things. Cla if Claudia is going to try to convince someone to do something, she needs to have Renee on her same page. She basically wants Claudia and the girls to work with the boys, but she's not telling Renee that. So that's never going to happen. And, and she's I not said telling Renee. I said this in my rating. When I rated Claudia, I said, I'm going to give her the score, but I'm scared that Claudia is the type of player to not actually be able to move things where they go. And this is what, this is what I was talking about. You can't just have Renee sitting there thinking something totally opposite from you, and this is supposed to be your close, one of your closest allies. Mm -hmm. Is Shanae even in the game? Babe, you need to get your shit together. Like, you need to get all your people on one. You can't just be you and Ty talking about it and then never actually talk to everybody else. Dan's not even a good ally. He doesn't talk game. He doesn't know what he's doing. You, you yeah. I just feel like it's, it's based up. on it's based on the showman's connections. I mean, these are the same <clears> girls that were literally considering keeping Ty. They wanted to keep. They wanted. I mean, keep that. They wanted to mm -hmm. keep that and ride out with that six person alliance. It's like I guess they're going more so for these guys to keep them safe. I mean, yeah. I, I really don't understand it because Claudia, one minute you're saying these guys are winning the game. We gotta get them out. And the next minute you're contemplating keeping him because they want to mm -hmm. work with you. So it seems like I guess she's. It's fearful of the guys as long as she's not if she's working with them, she's okay with them. But if they're not yeah. working directly with her, it's a problem. Because that is the first time That's the guys right. approach them with the group. So I guess there's the difference. However, I mean, it makes me look at it does make me look at her game a little bit differently because it's like I don't think going with Ty, Zach, and Dan would have been a good decision. I mean, it's they would they would have pissed off so many people in the house. And then think yeah. about it, said he had well, said would have been out. That's the guy. That's the guy. But who knows? Okay. Who and, uh, and, you know, and if it was the Ben hey. But it's like at this point, now that Zach is out, you know, so, uh, you don't know who the HOH is. It seems like these past week or so that, the, you know, I mean, Shania and Carly have just been up there and trying to ask, and people are noticing it. And mm -hmm. Renee is kind of on the outskirts of that. And she's like, I want to work 
it seems like Renee is actively trying to work against their showmances because she wants yeah. to bring them into the game. Like, she wants yeah. them to get their head in it. Because from my mm-hmm. understanding, you know, what Renee said, you know, she wants their end game to be, you know, the Final Four, uh, Girly Pops and then Daniel Dan- 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 the Four. Mm-hmm. And um, she says in another conversation, and I think in the drop, it was uh, the next drop, she says that she would like, you know, the Shady Bunches and the Girly Pops to be top six. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, I think she means that. Yeah. I think that she wants the middle people to be at the end because it gives them the higher chance to win. I don't think she wants mm-hmm. any of the Hope, that, Dan, Ty, uh, Jonathan there. And I think that's... But smart Claudia don't want that. Pops. And, and that's not smart because Claudia wants Dan and Ty in her in-game and savings. And it's like, girl... They would have really. beat the fuck out of you in all them comps and you would have went home. And basically, that was the conversation. <clears throat> After this, we get a conversation between Ty and Anika. Anika basically thinks Ty is... Ty. Dan is HOH. Ty thinks it's Jonathan. They're both wrong. That's all. After that, Renee has another another conversation with Renea, and she really just reiterates the same idea, which is that she wants to stay in the middle. She wants to keep the sides at at odds. The final four should be them and Daniel. Same shit. I feel so bad for Renee because I think this week to me, uh, I felt it. I felt it. You know, brewing. But I feel like this week to me kind of solidified that I think Renee out of the early pops is she has the she's the sharpest tool the shed over there because yeah. I think she has a really good understanding of their position and how mm-hmm. to move forward. I think she's thinking more optimally, and it sucks because you know on the house perspective, I mean people are just you know they are very fine with pounding her. People are blaming yeah. her for being a secret HOH. Her two closest allies are shutting her out as someone that they can you know, work with. It's, it's weird, the position that mm-hmm. she got put into. And I do think it's because, you know, being used as a pawn early on in that way, I mean, it has really just diminished her um, agency in the game. To like, no yeah. one, I don't think anyone takes what she says seriously. And it's like, Claudia and Shania definitely should. And I think, like, the issue with Renee is, like, I kind of think she's a good player in a strategic mindset kind of sense. But I don't think she's the best social player ever. So because she got dealt a bad card and then socially she's not that girl like that like that, I think it like really puts her in a bad position to where she can't really do much. But I noticed that like in this next drop, there's a conversation with Renee and Koozie. And it's like Renee is kind of re-solidifying this middle group thing that they had an alliance with. And it's like Claudia comes in and she doesn't really help re-solidify that. And it's like Renee is actively, I feel like, helping the girly pops she is. In, in this ideology that she has because she's reiterating things with Daniel and Kuzi. And even Shanae is talking to Kuzi in this. I haven't seen Claudia talk to them in ages. And it's like, where are you at, girl? Like, Claudia really just talks to Ty and them. And then she was in that one conversation where she didn't even say anything. So it's like, I think Claudia needs to be on the right mindset or else the girls are going to lose. The girl yeah. is going to lose. It's like Which she's, sinking, she's sinking on the Thai <laughs> ship. And it's like her relationship to Thai is it benefiting And Thai is not even sinking. Way. She's sinking. And Thai is so good. Literally. It's Which like is she, worse. She's low-key the anchor of Thai. Like, because I think she's focused on Thai and this Dan shit while everyone else is focused on locking it in with Koozie and them. You should have been focused on talking to Koozie and them all week. Yep. That's now y'all the girl, like Renee was trying to. Them. Now y'all are mm-hmm. like, at this point, the Shady mm-hmm. Bunch hope Jonathan are on a solidified side. I mean, yeah. you know, they may target Santina, but if they're not going to be it. I was just going right to say, they might, they, it could have been that Renee and them had the Shady Bunch so unlocked that they wouldn't target, that they would always target Santina before them. I'm not so sure. If the Shady Bunch get HOH, they might be like, well, Grubby Pops it is. Because I, uh, Santina is with them. I will say, a part of me feels like the Shady Bunch's goal right now, I, I mean, if, if I, it just, I feel like what it should be is to not win yeah. too many age ways to move forward. If it was me, I would let Hope and John get it. Um, yeah. Ty can anybody can get it. Anybody, cause I, and, and same with the Girly Pops. I feel like if the Girly Pops and the Shady Bunch win, if any of those three from each group win, they should go after anyone but each other. I think that they, yeah, honestly, the, the best bet is to go into end with each other, soon to be five six. Like, because yeah. I think competition wise, um, Mainly competition wise, <laughs> mm-hmm. because I do think that once you get to those end game comps, you know you could see a Jonathan, a Hope, a Ty beat y'all on some pretty specific things, and it would not be good. Yeah, I think the issue with the Shady Bunch throwing is the potential of a girly pop taking out Hope or Jonathan, and mm. I feel like and you know, that would weaken that would weaken them too fast. I feel, mm. especially if John, let's say uh, Hope or Jonathan gets out, what does Santina go back to Ty? 
Now they have all the girly pops, Ty and Santina. You're right. Who might nominate y'all. So it's like, I'm, because they might, I feel like my initial instinct, if I was them, is to throw. But when you're thinking about it, you cannot do that. Not right now. Like, hoping Jonathan versus all of them. Because if any it's of the five of them. Like, like, let's like, say like, Dan yeah. was in that situation. Who are you putting up there? Santina and Ty. That's true. That's, he, that's his only options. That's his only options. If Ty, Hope, can you be the, uh, we need to hide our lines, Hope. And that's probably what they'll do. I can see that. I can see that maybe. Because they do have that's what I would, that He point. would have to. But that's the thing. It's he like, it, 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 like, the girly pops, I mean, they're almost in a position to where they have to be nominated. Their trust is going to have to be broken unless they are starting to get power and it, you know, yeah. it goes the other way. Yeah. Child, it's getting, it's getting down to the wire. It's getting interesting. Okay, the next day, which was April 2nd, um, we got this team. So we started it off. This was a long drop with not, like, the first half of y'all. Y'all, this first half of this drop, girl, didn't nothing happen. Nothing at all. Nothing happened. We know by this point that the nominees were Dan and Ty. Yep. And we find out later in this drop that Daniel won the veto. Period. Yes, Daniel Daniel. Daniel. Period. Ain't that up? Um, boom. So we started it off, a bunch of nonsense, and then we get to a big conversation. Well, a big cam talk. Period. Koozie's cam talk. And this is how you know Koozie is the best player in the house. Well, you already knew that. Period. Go in. Go in. And then you, and you got a little hesitation because last week. But then you remember, the, like, Koozie. Queen Koozie. stays queen. The queen stays the queen. She does. So Kuzi talks to the camera and she says, look, <clears throat> all I have to do is make sure my relationships are tight. I need to make sure that the tightness of my relationships are all there because it will likely be the five of us left. It will likely be the five of us at the end of the game. And I want to make sure that each one of those five, they're going to want to prioritize me. They need to prioritize me. <laughs> <laughs> I love her accent, bro. It's, it's fucking so crazy. Uh, but she says she needs to keep up her relationship. And she mentioned the five. The five is, you know, Hope and them. Hope, Jonathan, Kuzi, Anika, and Daniel. Daniel. She says the five of them, she needs to keep her relationships good with all of them. She's in the middle of those two. She's in between Hope and Jonathan, Daniel, and Anika. Perfect mm-hmm. position. Girl, get to the five. Please. Like, I game. think she's definitely the best set up in that, in that factor. And I really like that Kuzi, she understands her position in the game. And that is, that is so beautiful because, you know, the type of game she's playing, I, I mentioned this to Farrell off the podcast, I think a lot of archetypes uh, for the type of social game she's playing, they did not know the game well enough to mm-hmm. stay in the position that they have. The fact that she's having in-depth conversations with the cameras, which I'm so sorry, Koozie, they play in your face without live feeds, because it's definitely given she keeps talking to the cameras. The way we supposed to know where she's us, at now. And uh, we don't even but it's like, the fact that she's talking to the camera about what she wants to do, she wants to go to the five and have them prioritize her, and she's speaking about, you know, she mentioned this conversation how Ty, she knows, is going to be safe this week. Put it that. So mm-hmm. she wants Ty to realize that him being she's safe the reason. was her. You know, she she put her mouth in that. It was her hand that did that, and she wants to rebuild that connection. We see in the episode today that they had a talk. Ty was like, you know, he still respects Koozie. He still likes yep. Koozie. He would like to still yep. rebuild with Koozie. So it's very yep. clear that mother is mother is the best set up in the game. You couldn't even call her Koozie no more because that's what mother. We also, what we also learned from these daily drops is that the women alliance still are, I mean, even if they're not fully solidified, they don't have a name, they're still acting like they're <laughs> together. So mm-hmm. I highly doubt if a Shania, Claudia, or Renee win that Koozie would be touching the block. This woman mm-hmm. is safe. On all angles, literally the anybody can win HOH. Who probably would have targeted her, and maybe not even would have been Dan. It's now out. He's out. Better so go. He out. Like, actually, oh, who's his mother? Like, Girl, oh, she is she's she's her bitch, bro. She's clearly the best player, and it's funny because Zach and Ty clocked it last week. Zach is now gone. <laughs> Ty is back with mother. Like I don't know. Like there's nothing they can really do mm-hmm. to stop. I'm so so happy. Team. I was scared as hell. Oh, I'm scared as hell. And I think this mm-hmm. definition of big risk, big reward, bitch. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because I do think the Zach plan was a huge risk. I still do not agree it that it was best for her play. At the end of the day, if Dan was a secret HOH, girl, we would be over here talking about Then Koozie. what? Koozie, baby, get behind me! You know? But mm-hmm. she took the risk. She got out the huge target. She shifted the house, and she's back in her position. That is Back mother. in her best position in the motherfucking house. 
arguing. And, and she knows it. And I, I love, she knows it. And she knows bitch it. is walking around here playing the best game in the history of Big Brother and don't even know it. <laughs> won't know it at all. The fact that Helena. she knows it. Let's stop. Hey, no shade. I want to Helena to win so bad. God. Anyway. Let me stop before I go through a whole fucking circle. <laughs> Koozie, Daniel, y'all, because I stand Helena. I did so bad. You oh, said I, shit. Picked her, I picked her so early because I was so happy to stand her the first three weeks. I was rating her the highest. I was giving her nines. I was so happy. Koozie's doing what I wanted Helena to do. Anyways, oh. Koozie, Daniel, and Hope are talking, and they talk about the potential of one of them being renowned potentially. Kuzi is like, you know, we have a solid four votes, but I still, you know, we got to be safe. And like, they're, they're talking about, you know, we don't know exactly what they're talking about, but we know what they're talking about after this conversation. But basically, there's a risk that one of them might get renommed because the veto might get used. We know they don't have, you know, and she's saying we have four of those votes locked in. This five is pretty locked. That's another thing. This five is way more locked than whatever Cloudy was trying to do. Yeah. So because they couldn't solidify. Renee don't even like Ty. Literally. Yeah. So it's like that's bad. Renee don't um, like Ty or Dan. Ty and Dan walking around talking about some Renee's HOH. Renee's HOH. It's bad. After this, Claudia and Renee swap, and they don't know what's going on, y'all. They are in the clouds. It's so bad girl, for Claudia. They're talking Renee. about they, Santina could be the Reno. Grace. Oh God. Like they were literally in the best position <laughs> in the house for like a day. A few hours. They don't know if Santina is the renom or not. They don't know what the move is. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. What? And then we're coming into them discussing, like, they're like, they're like, okay, well, it depends on who's next to Dan or Ty. Like, if, if Dan or Ty comes up, which one of them comes up, it depends on who goes up next to them if she will save Dan or Ty. Because Renee, you know, she wants Dan and Ty out. So, yeah. you know, we can infer that this is a conversation about her, you know, Claudia probably telling her, like, hmm, are you going to save the men that I want to work with if right. someone goes in the block? And she was like, well, if someone like Santina is nominated, then maybe. That's so then Claudia like asking about this, and Claudia is the reno. I'm so... And that's the should... heck. Will you be maybe she should say, <laughs> right. You need to be focused on... See, Claudia needs to be focusing on herself. She's mm -hmm. fucking on Ty and Dan all week, and she's nommed. Babe, you weren't playing the game at all. Where were you? Where Shut were up. you? Girl. But she's not nom yet. After this, Daniel, Hope, Jonathan, and Koozie talk. And this is how you know the they score. are locked. The big score. I was going to think it was here. Period. So we find out in this conversation, Daniel has the veto. And he wants to use the veto on Ty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Just got the girls talking. I'm going to tell y'all a secret. I saw on Twitter that Daniel won the veto. I went straight to text Lee. I said, Lee. Why he finna use it on Ty? This was before the Daily <laughs> This was before I saw this. This was before is, I even saw. And I was like, girl, anyway, I just ignored it. And then literally the next update. Daniel wants to use it on Ty. I said, oh, Lord. I just knew it. And, and don't don't come for Daniel. This is not a... Well, no, a and, that, and that's the thing. I just, I think it's, it's really, really annoying. Well, what I want to say, I, I want to say, comparing yeah. Daniel to Big D, just because he's plus size and gay, is weird. I need to stop that. That's very weird. They're playing two totally different games. And they're two totally different people. Nothing about them is similar anyway. At all. I think a lot of people have this feeling about Daniel because last week he wanted to keep Zach. At the end of the day, we've talked about it here a lot. Keeping Zach was best for the Shady Bunch's position. They were able to maintain and rebound because they're good players. But that was not the best move. It was a huge risk. And they, for a few hours, were in one of the worst positions in the house. They were literally mm -hmm. on the bottom. So... Uh, and it's that thing. They're not working with Santina. She, Scooby just actually turned on Santina. So it's not necessarily they're doing it, keeping them mm -hmm. safe. It's Jonathan's doing. So at the end of the day, it was best for Daniel's game to have Zach in the house. Now, him saying, oh, I'm not going to evict him regardless, that was weird. We can call him weird for that. But I don't like how people are just simplifying his game to he wanted to keep Zach because he was in love with Zach. That's also weird and low-key offensive because he's a gay man. Yeah, yeah. He's in love with Zach. And Zach, like, I don't like that we're yeah, putting yeah. that much power on Zach in this situation. And I get it. We saw Kevin and William. We saw Kevin and Johnny. <laughs> Kevin and <laughs> twice. That one. <laughs> uh, we've seen, we've seen. Um, Brayden, Tashawn and Brayden. Uh, Tashawn, no shade. We've seen. Um, that was another, another one. one. That's a Kevin, and, Kevin and Josh last season. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> running the fuck out of Josh. And, and, and. <laughs> But at the end of the day, well, I will say in this situation, it's very clear. Like, I think 
when you consider William, you consider Johnny, you consider Josh, you consider Brayden a little bit. We, they were not having those conversations that shown that they knew where they were in the game. Like, Dan has a own, his own alliance. He's part of the girly pops. And now he's in a bigger alliance with Jonathan and Hope. He's in one of the best positions. He's probably in the best position of the game other than Koozie. Mm-hmm. Like, they're competing. <laughs> at this point. So it's like, he's still set up well, and he knows what he's doing. Like, him keeping Zach, like, it could have been personal connection, but it was also strategic and social connection. We saw in yeah. Zach's diary room, one of the people he trusted was Daniel. It's not far-fetched that he wanted to keep him in the game. It's annoying, especially because we didn't like Zach, but it's not far-fetched. At the end of the day, that was someone that he could have worked with. Now, mm-hmm. this decision, I thought it was a little <laughs> bit iffy at first. Like, he tells the group, basically, he wants to do this for his game. He's very open about he wants to do this for his game, but he feels like he can leverage this power to help them as well. So basically, he's like, he doesn't really have a connection with Ty like that. So he wants to use Vito on him, talk to him about it, and basically start building that connection. So if Ty wins HOH, then he can be good. Now, at the end of the day, you know, the whole leverage for the group part, eh. But HOH part, yes. Because think about Daniel's position. Daniel is in the Shady Bunch, so he's safe with Kuzi and Anika. He's in the alliance with Jonathan and Hope. Santina cannot play again. He's in the Final Four alliance with the Girly Pops. If he is in a good standing with Ty, no one is putting this nigga on the block for at least top three. Period. Y'all have to start thinking, okay? It's not just, oh, we hate this person, so everyone should be targeting this person. No. This man is in one of the best positions of the game, and it's because of the social work he put in. So it's not far-fetched what he's doing. I understand it's annoying. And this week, it's like, okay, they should to Santina. Y'all not in an alliance with Santina. We know Jonathan has control over her, but you know, Daniel, his perspective isn't as strong as probably even Kuzis and Hope. He doesn't for sure know Santina's going to do whatever Jonathan says. So that's mm-hmm. where risk is at and his excuses that they have the votes. However, it's not a bad plan. It's not mm-hmm. a bad plan for the game that he's playing. I agree. I think with Daniel, the difference between Daniel and all those other players like Josh and them is I feel like Daniel is doing these things with the intention to further his own personal game 100%. And a lot of the things these other players did was clearly for the person who was at hand. The person y'all are claiming him to have been whatever with is gone. So I don't even know what y'all are claiming at this point. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's weird. But anyways, Daniel, I feel like is very, very self-interested. Yes. But I feel like it's to a fault almost because I feel like he disregards his allies a little bit too easily. Kuzi said, if you put if you vote to save him, like I'm almost gonna be done with you. And he said, Well, <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> like, I don't know. He could have at least lied. I don't know. I feel like he's too open about his, you know, kind of disregard of other people's interest and his own self-interest. I think he's way, way openly, too openly self-interested. He just literally told them, well, I'm doing this for myself. If one of y'all get nominated, we got the votes. Good luck. And it's yeah. like, ooh. Like, they kind of didn't care. We got lucky. But it's <laughs> what like... What did he say that part? That's a good luck part. It, he didn't say good luck. But if it was me, I would be like, okay, King. But, but uh, I mean, the way... I mean, I, I think I think at least in this conversation, he was honest in saying, like, this is my personal game, but I want to yeah. use it to help you guys. And the thing is, we've learned from Kuzi's camp talk earlier that Clearly, this must have been a plan discussed probably with the Shady Bunch. Like, it seems like she yes. knew before the conversation yes. with Hope and John that this was going to happen. So, exactly. it, it feels like this is something that they probably planned separately, too, so they can build that connection. It's mainly to help the Shady Bunch, if we're being mm-hmm. honest. And they're saying it's for Hope and Jonathan. But Hope and Jonathan are eating it up. They're down with the plan. Uh, mm-hmm. And Kuzi, she basically backs uh, Dale up saying, you know, in this way, if he wins, like maybe one of us goes up, but we can sway it for the next person. And they're mm-hmm. all really, really into it. Um, Koozie even says, you know, I get a little inkling that her and Ty are back on good terms because she says that Ty told her mm-hmm. he had a conversation with Hope and he's no longer <clears throat> looking at Hope. Now, Hope, Ty could be lying to Koozie. Kuzi could just be lying in this conversation them. so they can be okay with the plan. You never really know. But that seems about right. I don't really see why Ty would want to target Hope. Hope clearly does not necessarily want to target Ty. So mm. they 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 could really get back on good terms. Like, that would be best for both of their game, honestly. Um, yeah. She says that Ty told her that he wants to target Renee because he yeah. feels that she has a pull on Claudia. And that makes me feel like he is actually being honest with Kuzi because he's obviously walking around saying that he want, he thinks Renee is a secret agent way. So clearly he feels okay targeting her. So... You know, I think they all just kind of come to the decision that, you know, Ty is workable. 
to where mm-hmm. even if he does win, it will only be one of us, and we can control the vote from there. Yep. Um, good luck for them. No, nah, yeah, I think it'll work. Honestly, and the Jonathan hope I mean, this is the, the best plan for them. Like, one, they're working with Santina in this trio, and she's not in this in this five person alive. I think she should definitely be a six yeah. if they like it or not. She's the HOH. Get over it, yeah. babe. Uh, eat it up because yeah. it gives them on fair ground with the shady bunch. And at this point, now you're just giving them more leverage because at the end of the day, they're building that relationship with Ty, and y'all yeah. are not. Y'all can't even vote to save him and say, "Oh, we saved you, girl." Like they can't say anything. Yeah. So it's like they will still remain targets by Ty. If they don't exactly. do something. And Jonathan, he doesn't care. We don't know if Hope, like I said, is having some formal conversation for real. Mm-hmm. But you know And it's crazy how they let story. how they how they let Koozie and Daniel take that leverage over them because Jonathan and Hope are the people who had the connection with Ty first. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, y'all just let Daniel come out of nowhere and Koozie come out of nowhere. Well, Koozie but see, always this had is, that this is, this is also where it gets interest, <laughs> interesting because they're taking the leverage over them, but Koozie's taking the leverage over Daniel. Because mm-hmm. she's she's basically yep. openly saying, I'm going to take credit for this move. I'm going yep. to steal this idea and, and suck it all up for me. And we know Koozie has a previous relationship with Ty. From our knowledge, Daniel has no relationship with Ty. Ty was very open about distrusting Daniel and Anika and potentially nominating them, which is why Daniel wants to do this in the first place. Like, he mm-hmm. has the knowledge of this mm-hmm. man talking about nominating him. So, of course, he wants to build that leverage. But right. at the end of the day, with Koozie taking the credit, I don't think that Daniel could do anything to kind of get that grace. I think, of course, if Ty were to win the next situation, maybe he wouldn't touch him just because of that. But they're not. There isn't going to be an alliance. I feel like past him saving him with the veto, and maybe Ty not nominating him. I think next who's he getting his ear? It's going to be well. Who's he get that, babe? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's interesting because I said this earlier. I feel like the best players end up in an alliance together, and I think right here, Jonathan. Koozie and Daniel are the best players in the house, arguably. So I feel like it's them three battling for control in a way. Mm -hmm. We see Jonathan like, I need to bring in Santina in this group. We see Koozie like, he Daniel's going to make it seem like it's him, but I'm going to make it seem like it's me. They're all like strategically kind of make themselves in the best position. And it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Who's going to come out on top? Koozie. Because I definitely can see (laughs) West. I definitely see Kuzi and Daniel in that end game. I don't know about Jonathan at this point because he's so just like on one side. Like he yeah. wants to be against He gets Ty one track openly. Line. He gets and one that's track all he's worried about. And that's not good because at the end of the day, I don't see him rebuilding his relationship that he had with any of the girly pops other than Claudia. And they had a conversation in this daily drop, awkward as hell. Um, they did him and Claudia. No relationship with uh, with with Ty, so I think they're banking on winning, uh, and we kind of see that because after this conversation, we get a Hope and Jonathan conversation. They're mm-hmm. very very pumped about knowing Daniel with the HOH. They were sad at first because they thought Dan may have had it, which means that he would be coming off the block. But now knowing that Daniel has it and Daniel wants to use it on Ty, and they're down with the plan, they're like, "Well, Dan can go." Yeah, Ty can go next, and they feel like they're smooth sailing. They feel like they can win competitions, get to the end with their five. And it's just like, mm-hmm. ooh, it could all be so simple. Mm-hmm. But it's not, baby. It's not that simple. It's I think not. I think that five, Jonathan, if he's a good enough player, can work it and still end up on top, even if they do make it to the end. But uh, Or if they win a comp. I feel like if that five is the five, Hope or Jonathan could just win – Two of those comps and then boom, what now? That's the thing. It's like, so that's, you know, that's Anika, what Hope done. Then what? <laughs> so uh, I think we're only it's gonna be top ten after this round, so it's not too many rounds left. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I just I don't bank on them continuously winning, and I don't think that he's using his social skills enough anymore. Yeah. To keep himself safe, and that's scary. Yeah. He might pick it back up. We'll see. I think what would rev him up is if, like, let's say next week Claudia win H O H. I think Jonathan's going right to the room. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So we'll see. We'll see. I, I feel like right now those are the contenders, though. The, but those the big thing about Hope and Jonathan, they're really loyal to this five. Like, they're like, we feel like we they're can excited. Be like, Happy like, as hell. For the first time, I actually want to be in this game. I love it here. Like, this is our five. Mm-hmm. We rock it with it. And it's like, period. I, I honestly love the five. People on Twitter were saying, like, this is like our leftovers. Too. And it's like, I agree really with that. Like, I, I feel that. It's, it's that cute same as fuck. energy. Now, hopefully, Jonathan is not Kyle, but he can never be that. Never be that. Don't ever put that on him. Kyle was a baby, a, bo- a, a baby man. A baby, a baby man. <laughs> After this, we see quickly Daniel and Koozie. We get a shot of them. Daniel's like, I need to tell Anika the plan before she runs her mouth. 
And Kuzma's like, oh, she will run her mouth. And it's like, okay. <laughs> we see how they feel about Anika. After this, we see Renee talk to Kuzi. Mm-hmm. Renee puts in work for these shady bunch of people. She's mm-hmm. talking to them. So Renee's basically like, girl, the girls need to be locked. Kuzi's like, the girls are definitely like, like, if you guys are nominated, if a girl is nominated against the guy, I'm always evicting the guy. Yeah, she's like, like she knows her safety is within the girls. And it's like, I know Kuzi is lying to her teeth. Lying straight to the like, girl. It, you don't even feel it. It just feels so real for her. <laughs> And it's like, I, it's like I said, this conversation really made me feel like Renee is 100% leaning more on sticking with the Shady Bunch to the end. Like, she is not feeling what Claudia is talking about at all, for real, because she's speaking really openly in this conversation with Kuzi about the game moving forward. She is, 100%. Um, oh, after this, Claudia joins. Claudia is like... Oh, and they all discuss that the women need to remain strong. Mm-hmm. They discuss the they can make history. That, yeah, you know, they, they even can said, like, if you notice, no woman has been evicted from the house. They only Ooh. left. Period. So they're like, we can just keep this going, which would be hot. It would be hot. Renee was like, they would love it. the final six, all girls plus Daniel, minus mm. Shantina. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Period. So that's the plan. I think this is definitely the plan from Renee. Claudia did not seem as excited as I feel like Renee and Koozie pretended to be. But I feel like their, uh, Renee's idea, and probably Koozie's too a little bit, is that the six of them can be at the five, top six. And then I don't think that's Koozie's ideal top six, actually. I think a specific no. part of the conversation, too, um, they kind of start talking about Shania. And that's really yeah. what Claudia kind of really, you know, she chills back a little bit because they start going into detail about how Koozie did not, because apparently Shania approached Koozie last week about how she was going back and forth in the Zach vote. And Koozie mm-hmm. just felt like she's being an emotional player in that way and that she does not want to, you know, be associated with that type of gameplay because it's like, you're telling me that you're going back and forth over this person that, you know, in Koozie's eyes, it's not good for your game at all. Yeah. But, and, and Renee is kind of going into my situation too. She's like, yeah, I didn't understand why she would do that. And then Renee starts going in about how she's basically up dance ass yeah. the entire time and how she's happy that Rob didn't show Man Shania because she probably evicted me next to Rob. And yeah. it's like, Claudia's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well, they are close. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's just like, you know, so it, I think it's very clear this conversation. Like, you know, I think when Renee and Claudia talk, Claudia gives off the impression, like, yeah, it's me and you, baby girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in all actuality, in all actuality she it's wants her to man. Luckily, because Dan's going at home. At the end of the day, while they're talking about the Zach vote, it wasn't just Shania that was wavering, it was Claudia. Well, Claudia too. was right there. They too. don't know that tea. Claudia, that thing, Claudia, she still got them, she still got some senses on her because they don't know the tea, the tea, the tea, the tea. Mm-hmm. Um, boom. That was the, that was the end of that drop. It was. And then we didn't get anything else. No, I'm playing. We no, got another so, drop. Basically, today's digital daily drop four three was mm-hmm. nothing at all. They played. We things. know that Daniel went a, went ahead with the plan. He yes. used the veto on Ty, and the renomination was Claudia. No. Why do I think the renom was Claudia? I think Jonathan said the renom was Claudia because we know from the other daily that Jonathan has been mad at Claudia for being up ties. What? Cool. Asshole. Um, I was gagged. <laughs> I don't know. In my mind, I, I didn't like, think Claudia oh, was going up. I did yep. not think Claudia was going to block, like especially like. I mean, fairly early. Like, I thought she'd be one of yeah. the last few nominated. And it's like, girl, no, up oh, on that motherfucking block. It's funny because, you know, she was our highest rated player coming out of Friday. We really <laughs> thought that her being in this position, even if I feel like even if she didn't keep it, Claudia's position was always higher in the girly pop. And now I'm just looking like, girl, you right there with him. Y'all all, mm-hmm. it's bad for all of y'all now. Like, her mm-hmm. entire leverage is just gone. It's bad for Claudia. Uh, I was scared for her, but uh, I was scared for her potential as a player. And this week kind of solidified it for me. Like, you're not going to do what you need to do, I don't believe. I don't trust that you're going to do what you need to do. Right now, it's funny because I feel like it's at a point in the game where I can literally guess the winner. Yeah. And it's like, it feels early, but it's been a lot of people who got out, like five people. You feel like you can guess the winner? Yes. Not Ooh. directly get it right, oh. but I feel like yeah. our options are so small. Usually at this point, I'm like, girl, anybody can win. I don't think Claudia can win this game. I don't think Shanae can win this game. I don't think Renee can win this game. I think, I think the options are. Still win, I think the options are Koozie, Jonathan, Daniel. That's it. I don't see nobody else win. 
I said it here. I think those are the front runners, but I still think anybody can take it. Just because every single week of this game has been so random. I think this it is the most solidification we've gotten. It looks like we're about to enter the jury, and with this solidification, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more, you know, simple. A little bit yeah. more, once, you know, not one-sided, but predictable. Um, hopefully, but every single week has been entirely different from the last, I felt. So it's That's just like, true. I wouldn't be surprised if that keeps going. And that type of unpredictability... Anybody can win. I mean, it reminds me, this season, the craft energy is on BB Can 6 levels. And <laughs> really? I think Paris was a very, you know, unpredictable winner at the time. If you watch that season, it's like, yeah, sure. you don't think Paris is going to win. And then Mother came with it. So I do think that anybody can come out as a dark horse and take it home. Um, I think there are front runners. I think there are people who are least likely. But I still feel like everyone's <laughs> in it. Especially with Dan out. Now that Dan is out, 100%. I if like anybody is capable of if Daniel Cousy or Jonathan do not win this game, I don't know. I'll be mad. I don't know what to tell y'all. Y'all can go ahead and, and, and slap. I will because say, I'm, I'm <laughs> fine with. That's the thing. I'm okay with a different winner, but leaves, I just don't if expect. Leaves, the only person I wouldn't want to win would be Shazam. But yeah, I can I still. I don't, mind. Yeah, I don't mind anything. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't even mind if Shazam wins. I don't mind any of the winners. I just would not expect it. I would genuinely. Well, I just want to win. I feel like who. Didn't do anything to get there. And I will say at this point, I can't see how Shanae will be. But She's in an alliance? <laughs> a lot of people get in alliances, babe. Frenchie was in an alliance. He deserved to win. Something might take. <laughs> Big D may say. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Um, That's all. Nothing folks. happened. Dan, yeah. Dan and Claudia, literally, for it, this one was like an hour and Four hours. Oh. Yeah, our, our this 10 minutes one was our literally uh, them playing a game at the kitchen table. So nothing happened. We get a Dan and Claudia conversation, and this is what she confirmed. Like, you know, it's us yeah. two. And she's just like, you know, I didn't want to sit next to you. Um, she's like, I understand this is going to be a hard week because they have allies that have to decide between the both of them, like Shania. Yeah. Um, and Dan says he already told Ty and Shania, whatever decision they make, it is what it is. Dan's going home. Like, I, yeah. I, I think there's a 100% chance that Dan's go- Dan, Dan, yeah. Dan is going home. And I'm here for that. I'm here yeah. for that. Because I hate people. players that I just feel like don't bring anything to the game. They're just sitting there. They're stagnant. They're just placeholders for bullshit. Mm-hmm. And he's out. Like, he's like the last pawn, I feel like, out of the game. Like, I agree. Love that for us. It's gonna the game's gonna pick up. It's gonna be really excited. Stay tuned with us this week on Friday. We will be covering um, the rest of the digital dailies and the rest of the week. We will be rating the players. So tune in on Friday tomorrow. We will be doing the motherfucking Survivor recap. So tune in for that. And on the day after that, we will be covering the Challenge uh, World Championship. So tune in for that too. And make sure you follow us at TV Reality Kingdom. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And girl, we're out.